Hi everyone, welcome to Satellite Positioning Systems. Uh, today in this video I will be showing you how to set up the GS controller for uh, the Leica GNSS receivers we have. Um, we have GS15 and GS16 here at Melbourne Uni, but the software for the controllers is the same as I will be showing you today. So this is the interface of Leica Captivate which is the software on the controller. Uh, I'm using the simulator to demonstrate here, um, which is going to be a little bit different from what you will see on the actual controller, but the main settings are the same. Uh, once you turn on the controller, you should, always, uh, you should also turn on the sensor at the same time. After a few seconds, they will be automatically connected via Bluetooth. In that case, uh, you will see more than zero satellites on the top bar and you shouldn't see this warning sign on the sensor icon here. Because I'm using the simulator, I don't have a sensor connected, so they're giving me um, zero satellites. And the settings we're going to do are a little bit different for two scenarios. One is RTK, one is static. Um, so the first thing you want to make sure of is going into settings, customization, and working style wizard. Here, uh, we have two profiles already created on the controllers we have at Melbourne Uni. Um, one is for RTK and one is for static. So you click on switch to a different working style, click next. If you're doing an RTK job, choose RTK and logging. If you're doing a static job, choose static one second. Uh, the difference between these two is very little. The working style basically um, loads up the default settings for these two kinds of um, jobs, uh, which we will be discussing very soon. So if you if you've selected the working style for your specific scenario, most of the settings should already be correct, but you should um, always double check them. Uh, one is in settings, GS sensor. Uh, we have three options. Uh, it's, it's very important to double check that they're all having this, the correct settings. Firstly, if we go to satellite tracking, uh, you should always make sure that all the systems uh, are ticked. On the actual controllers, you, uh, you might see different options uh, than what we're seeing here, but just make sure that everything is ticked. In advanced, there are more settings. Uh, Usually we just leave them at default because they're already set up on our controllers. So once you've done that, click, to OK, click OK. Head back to settings, GS sensor, then antenna heights. Uh, here we have rover antenna. This is probably something that you will need to change every time you go out for a job. Um, here if you click the menu, uh, you have different options. We have G GS15 and GS16. Use uh, the one for your sensor. And um, we uh, sometimes use a pole, sometimes use a tripod. Uh, choose the one that corresponds to uh, what you're using. Click OK. So if you use a tripod, the vertical offset will be 0 0.36 meters. That's because when we're using a tripod, uh, we have a tri rack and the extension between uh, the tripod and the sensor itself, uh, which gives us a vertical offset. However, if you're using a pole, uh, like here, that offset will be zero. Okay, this is something you always need to double check before a job. Uh, another thing here is the antenna height. This will be the height of the pole or the, the tripod that you measure for every point. Um, if you don't change it here, that's fine. Later on, in, while we're measuring a point, we can change it at any time. And um, if you somehow forget to change the rover antenna to the correct one and you have a wrong vertical offset for a static job, that is fine. Uh, because when we do the post-processing in Leica Infinity, you can always change this. But you should always know which one you're using. All right, so if you, uh, once you've selected the correct rover antenna uh, and the vertical offset, click OK. Now go back to settings, GS sensor, GNSS raw data logging. Uh, this is very important, especially for static jobs, because for static jobs, uh, we don't care about um, the coordinates that we measure on the controller. We only want the raw data, uh, which 
will only be locked if it's turned on here. So uh, for every job, just always make sure that lock GNSS raw data is turned on here. Uh, and always choose to store data on GS sensor. Uh, the reason we store it on the sensor instead of on the controller is that uh, if you store the data on the controller and somehow lose Bluetooth connection between these two, you will lose data. Okay, so we always store data on the sensor and afterwards we can take the SD card out of the sensor and export the data. And here these should already uh, have the default settings. Uh, static, log data every one second, and uh, the data format uh, is, should default to Leica format, which is recommended. Uh, you can also use Rhinex if you want to, but since we're, use, since we're using Leica Infinity for post-processing, uh, Leica format is fine. So once that's done, click OK. And now uh, for RTK jobs, uh, you um, need to make sure that the RTK stream is uh, configured correctly. Uh, it should already be for our controllers. So what you can do is click the network icon on the top bar, click start RTK stream. And because I'm using a simulator here, nothing will happen if I do this. But on the actual controller, once you click this, wait for a few seconds, it should say that uh, it's connected to the internet and the RTK stream is on. Uh, if somehow that doesn't work, go to Settings, Connections, and RTK Rover Wizard. Uh, choose Load an Existing Profile. We should already have a profile called uh, GPS Net. Choose that one and click Finish and try to start the RTK stream again. Sometimes the internet connection isn't stable. You need to uh, try this for a few times. Uh, one, a couple, there are a couple of ways to check that RTK is working properly. Uh, one is by looking at the uh, crosshair icon here. So on the actual controller, there's going to be a crosshair icon with a cross and a circle. Um, if the circle is big on the outside of the cross, that means we're not getting fixed solutions, uh, which probably means that RTK isn't configured properly. So you need to stop RTK stream and start it again to uh, make it work. If it's a small circle inside the cross, that means we're getting fixed solutions, um, which means that RTK is working properly. Um, another way you can check is by looking at the number of satellites. So in open sky environment here in Victoria, we should be getting more than 20 satellites uh, with these sensors. That's because they're capable of tracking satellites from uh, at least four GNSS. However, when RTK is on, um, because of the service that we're using, which is GPS net, uh, we should see uh, a decrease in the number of satellites here to about 10 or 12 satellites. That's because GPS net only supports RTK for GPS and GLONASS. Uh, so we will have fewer satellites here. Uh, that's not a rule of thumb, however, if you're using a different service in another region, uh, it's it's not going to be the same. But here in Victoria, because we're using GPS net, um, when RTK is on, we should only be getting about 12 satellites. Okay, so that's how RTK is configured. Uh, next, uh, once you've done all these, you can head into, you can create a new job and head into the measure app. So to create a new job, on the main home screen, scroll all the way to the left, click tap here to create a new job and give it a name. You can store the job in the internal memory or the SD card, it doesn't matter which one. Um, one thing we need to double check is the coordinate system. So here, if you click this on the actual controller, you will get a list of different coordinate systems, uh, but we're usually we're only interested in these two, which is MGA55 and GDA94, GDA2020, 55. Uh, in most cases, we will use this one which is GA202055. Um, if you click edit, you can see the specific parameters here. So for the transformation, uh, it will be GDA94, GDA2020. Uh, that's because uh, it's transforming GDA94 coordinates to GDA2020. That's just the profile that we get on these controllers. Um, most importantly, 
uh, make sure the Lipsoid is GIS80, which is used by GDA2020 and also RTRF. Uh, the projection should be UTM. And by default on our controllers, the geoid model should be VIC2020, which is um, AusGA2020 in Victoria. Uh, if you have that as the geoid model, by default, the, um, the data will have um, geoid height, which is also AHD height here in, in Australia as the default height. Um, however, if you want ellipsoid height, later on I will show you how to uh, switch to that. If you don't select a geoid model here, like what I'm doing now, it will give you ellipsoid height as the default height. So once that's done, click Store, click uh, OK to choose this cooling system, click Store again, and it will take a picture. Image stored. And now we have the project created. Uh, so if you have a project at the center on the main screen, that means it's selected. Now you can head into the Measure app to collect data. Uh, here I can't do that because I'm using the simulator. On the actual controller, uh, once you click the Measure app, it should, st it should start um, logging raw data, but it won't start measuring the, the point until you click the Measure button at the bottom. And there are a few things you want to change on the left-hand side once you're in the Measure app. One is the point ID. You should change it to a unique ID for every point. Uh, the other one is the antenna height. So you can uh, change it to the specific height that you measure for every point. Then you can click measure. After you do that, uh, you need to look out for a few things on the left-hand side. It will show you the quality and the DOP values. Uh, for RTK jobs, you should uh, wait for one or two minutes for the quality and DOP values to uh, be reasonably small then stop measuring and save the point. For static jobs, uh, there's another option that is very important, which is called uh, raw data locked. Um, if you turned on uh, raw data logging uh, earlier, you should see that the number of raw data locked um, increases by one every second. If it stays at zero, that means either you didn't turn on raw data logging previously or that your SD card isn't inserted all the way. So you need to double check those two things, come back and uh, measure the point. And um, for static jobs, uh, once you've done measuring, click stop measuring and that's it. Uh, the raw data should already be saved in the SD card. You can take the SD card and it, take the files to your computer for post-processing. Uh, as a matter of fact, the settings that we did here in the job uh, doesn't matter at all for raw, for static jobs because we only use the raw data. It only affects um, the coordinates that we see in the data of the job here. So for RTK jobs, once you've done measuring, uh, click the job, go to view and edit data. Uh, I didn't click to any point, so I'll create one. Uh, Easting and northing, uh, because uh, because we chose GA2020 MGA Zone 55, it will be in that system. I'll make up a point. Click Store. So if you've measured a few points, you should see a list of them here. Um, and you can select one, click Edit. And um, by default, it shows you easting, northing, and height. If you, however, want uh, geodetic, geodetic coordinates, which is uh, latitudes and longitudes, or Cartesian coordinates, you can click the function button, click Accord. Uh, it will give you local latitude and longitude. Uh, local means it's in the coordinate system that you specified. For us, it's GDA 2020. If you do that again, click Accord. It will give you WGS84 latitudes and longitudes in WGS84, which is the system that GPS uses by default. If you do that again, it will give you the Cartesian coordinates. And um, the height here, if you do have a geoid model loaded, this will be 
um, geoid height or AHD height here in Australia. Uh, if you want ellipsoidal height, click function, click ellipsoidal height, it will give you local ellipsoid height. Okay, so if you don't have a geoid model loaded, like what I'm doing here, uh, the default height is already ellipsoid height. Um, and if you click ellipsoid height, uh, nothing will be shown. Okay, and on this page, there are a few other things you can uh, check. Uh, if you click more, it will tell you the quality of the point when it was measured and also the timestamp. Okay, so uh, if you go back to the list of points, if you only have a couple of points for an RTK job, you can simply copy down the coordinates here. Uh, if you do have a list of points, uh, you can go back to the main screen, click the job, and um, click export data, use ASCII format, uh, which is going to be a text file, and save it to SD card, to the data folder. Uh, that's where you will be looking for the file uh, once you take the SD card out. Uh, give it a file name, and it will tell you the format of the data, which is P-E-N-H. P stands for point ID, E stands for easting, N stands for northing, and H stands for height. Okay, click OK, and that data will be exported. And then you can use the SD card to get the uh, coordinates out. Okay, all right, uh, so this is basically it uh, for the basic settings of the controller for GS15 and 16. Um, I'll see you next time.